Hey, 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 what is up? What's happening? Yes, 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 yes. Exciting times. I'm super excited for this interview. It's going to be amazing. Many of you know this uh, gentleman, uh, someone that I have learned a lot from. Very grateful for him and his wife, Mr. John Bavira. It's going to be awesome. And so drop me a comment. What do you love about John? What's your favorite book? What's your have you met him before? Have you have you seen him speak before? Drop him some love in the comments. What's up, Don, David, Katrina? Who else we got on here? We got uh, Madra. What's up, Madra? We got Jean, Sonia, Daryl, Linda, Catherine, uh, Joe, Judah. What's happening? Yes, yes, yes. I'm super excited. It's gonna be amazing. Melinda, Tony. Donna Johnson, what's happening? Don, Linda, very cool. Very, very cool. All right. So this guy is busy. Uh, we booked this like four months ago, uh, which is just awesome. I'm so grateful that we uh, got him out here and we're going to talk about some really, really powerful things um, just in case. So who do you know that loves John Bevere? Tag him and introduce them, interview them, you know, have, a, have them on here, uh, tag them, share this with them, and we're going to have some fun. But for those, just in case uh, there's someone on here that possibly does not know him, and, and I always hope that I am introducing people that may not, you know, know him uh, to him, uh, but he is a minister known for his bold, uncompromising approach to God's word. He is also an international best-selling author who's written more than 20 books that have collectively sold millions of copies and been translated into over 130 languages. Along with his wife, Lisa, John is a co-founder of Messenger International, which we'll talk a little bit about today. And this is a ministry committed to revolutionizing global discipleship, driven by a passion to develop uncompromising followers of Christ. Messenger has given over 60 million translated resources to leaders across the globe. To extend these efforts, the Messenger X app was developed providing digital discipleship resources at no cost to users in more than 120 languages. Messenger X currently has users in over 20,000 cities in over 235 nations. Uh, when John is home in Franklin, Tennessee, you'll find him loving on his G babies, playing pickleball or trying to persuade Lisa to take up golf. Please help me welcome the one and only John Bevere. John, how are you? Ray, such a pleasure and an honor to be on with you. And I guess the more important thing to say is who uh, on this podcast, uh, love or not podcast, we're on a Zoom, who loves Jesus? Because that's Amen. really what we all do is we are serving him. And I love, love, love your portrait of uh, the Prince of Peace up there in the upper left, yeah. my upper left-hand corner, everybody yeah, else's. Yeah. I've got the same one over here. I'll even nice. show it to you. There it is. Hey, right. nice, uh, nice. Actually, that's uh, she signed it, Akiana, who painted it. Nice. I don't know if people know this, but I'd like to say that she was four years old, raised in an atheist family. Mm. The Lord revealed himself to her. She started drawing and painting visions of heaven that he had shown her. At wow. eight years old, she painted this painting, and uh, it is worth the original, they say, over a million dollars. So she's wow. absolutely a sign and a wonder from heaven how God can put his hand on somebody and them do something way beyond what a normal eight-year-old child could do. And so Amen. that's what we serve, and he loves to do great things. He just needs people who can believe him for it. And Ray, the Amen. thing I love about you and Jessica is you have childlike faith, even though mm. you are very wise in business, in leadership. Mm. And this is what God looks for is childlike faith. You say to a child, yeah. I'm going to do something for you. The child doesn't go, well, that passed away five months ago. I don't believe you're going to do that, Dad. <laughs> you know, that's just so heartbreaking when I hear people who yeah. question God Almighty, who's put the universe together with the just the voice of his word. Yeah. And the spirit of God put the stars in the universe with his finger and called every single star by name. I mean, come on. Wow. What a God. So good. So good. So good. Amen. Oh, I love it. I love it, man. 
Um, you know, and it was such a, a blessing to spend, you know, last year, I uh, spent some time with, with you and your wife and some really cool people in Cabo. That was an amazing experience. Um, you know, um, you, you know, you and Lisa prayed over us, which was just such a, a powerful experience. We just really appreciate you, man. Um, and so one, I know that you have, you, you have a, a ton of books out there, right? And um, one that really, and I've, I've read Relentless, I read Beta Satan, and one that really, and they were all helpful. One that really moved me was your awe of God. And, and it really helped me to understand uh, the fear of the Lord. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that. Um, can you explain that? Can you can you just share like how how can because you know Solomon said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and if we want to be wise and wisdom is above all things that we can desire right then then okay well what is that fear of the Lord what does that mean well let's alleviate concerns and all your leaders that are listening right now the fear of the Lord doesn't mean that I'm scared of God it means I'm actually terrified of being away from God. When we fear God, we reverence, we stand in awe of him beyond anything or anyone else. And so what happens is we take his heart. We love what he loves. We hate what he hates. If you look at the fear of the Lord, it was Jesus's delight. I mean, it's interesting. Isaiah 11, 3 says this was his delight over wisdom, over knowledge, over counsel, over power. His delight was the fear of the Lord. And if you look at Isaiah 33, 6, it's God's treasure. And if you look at what Paul says, he says, it's, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So in other words, we mature our salvation with fear and trembling. So it's an aspect of our walk with God that we don't talk about very much. When we talk about leadership, because I know you, you attract leaders. I look at Solomon. He's raised by David, King David. He is taught the fear of the Lord because David feared God. David made a massive mistake in his life. It is a yeah. time when he kind of let down his guard let down his holy fear, but David learned from it and David taught Solomon. Solomon became an extremely successful leader. I mean, literally the Bible says that there was not one family in all of Israel that didn't have a home and a garden. So yeah. think about it. Nobody's renting apartments, renting houses. Nobody's in a government project. Every single family has a home and a garden. That's crazy amazing when you think of that kind of leadership. His leadership was so profound that Queen, she, Queen of Sheba traveled a great distance just to behold it. And she said, look, my expectations were high, but you went way above it. When I look at the way you ruled this nation, the way your servants are so happy. Okay, he embraced the fear of the Lord. He walked in a wisdom and an ability of leadership that no king before or after him walked in. Uh, in Israel and anywhere in his generation on earth. That's why they would travel ambassadors, kings to come see him. But he didn't treasure the fear of the Lord like Jesus did. Right. Mm. And he let it go. He starts marrying all these women. They turn his heart away. And now you get the book of uh, Ecclesiastes where he's just cynical. He's jaded. Everything that goes around comes around. Oh, what's stolen can never be recovered. Uh, the day you die is better than the day you're born. Oh my gosh, who writes that? Somebody that is cynical and jaded. And I, I, I have witnessed people in the marketplace, in, in ministry, in green rooms, behind closed doors. They're so cynical, so jaded. Mm -hmm. What happened? They lost the treasure, the treasure that God gave us to keep our hearts pure, to keep our hearts open to his wisdom, his creativity, his ingenuity, his ability that he gives to his servants. That opens our hearts to it. We let it go. And now all of a sudden we become jaded. And so this is this is something that I feel is so important. Um, I don't know why we don't talk about it more uh, yeah. because Barna shows that over 30 million, this is crazy, from the year 2000 till today, over 30 million people have walked away from Jesus. Mm, walked away from wow. the faith. Now, 30 million is one out of every 10 Americans. Mm. This is not one out of every 10 people that went to church. One out of every 10 Americans have literally walked away from the mm. faith in the past. And, and Paul told us that. He said that day, you know, he's talking about the, the, the end of time, the second yeah. time. It will not come until there's a great falling away. And what I love that he didn't write, Ray, 
is he said they wouldn't come back. And, you know, John the Baptist was sent after the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I believe that there are great leaders like you and your team and and many others that are going to go after the lost sheep of the church. But I look at this and you got over 30 million Americans walking away from the faith. They're now professing agnostics, atheists, and spiritualists. I mean, I'll give Mm -hmm. you an example. Pastor friend of mine just had a couple come up to him. They said, all three of our sons, they love Jesus with all their heart. Well, that was what we they thought. Um, they they were called to ministry. All three went to different universities, and they all came back professing agnostics. They're mm-hmm. they're they're agnostics. Why does this happen? Because we lose the holy fear of God. So the love of God. What the love of God does is it keeps us from being legalistic. You know, legalism is very hateful in the eyes of God. Yeah, it the spirit people. spirit of religion. Yeah, a spirit of religion, a legalist is somebody that just beats people, uses the word of God to control people's behavior, try to get people to do what they want them to do. Uh, They make serving God a bunch of rules and regulations. God hates that. Legalism protects us from the ditch, or excuse me, the love of God protects us from the ditch of legalism. Mm. But then you have the other side of the road. And the other side of the road is called lawlessness. That's a life where I am a law to myself. I know what's best for me, right? I I, I do what's right in my own eyes. I do what's right. Exactly. The fear of God keeps us from that. So you see, you've got uh, absolutely, here, get my hands here. You got this narrow (laughs) road and you, 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 you don't want to get off that narrow road because that narrow road is the way to life. Hmm. There is a way which seems right to man, but it ends it, where it ends up is destruction and death. And yeah. what's really scary, you know, Ray, this is what's really scary. I'll never forget when I was having, okay, I don't know how else to just say it, but a debate with God. Hmm. I had You're I wrestling. Had, yeah, I had identified something as being good. And I felt this yuck in here. And, and I, I got down at the end of my bed in, in the hotel room and I said, Why do I feel so awful inside? Why do I feel like I'm in error right now? And the Lord said, because what you've identified good is very wicked in my eyes. I went, what? Mm -hmm. And and I started reminding all the good things that came out of this. And God started reminding me of all the things that this was an affront to him. This, Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said, but God, all the good. And you know what the Lord said to me, Ray? Right in that hotel room. He said, Eve wasn't drawn to the evil side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She was drawn to the good side. Mm. I went, when she saw it was good, when she saw it, when she partook. Mm. And all of a sudden I realized there is a good that we call good that is very offensive to God Mm. that actually will destroy us. See, if you look in the garden, you got these two trees. You got the tree of the of life which is what i know i know that i live in god and he's my creator he knows what makes me he knows what breaks me right okay let me give you an example i've got four sons when they were all toddlers christmas day is a work day <laughs> everybody who has yeah you know what i'm talking about they open up the gifts and guess who's building the gifts all That's day right, yeah, right? Now, I'm your typical dad. I rip open the box, throw the pieces on the floor, throw the box and the instruction manual over in the corner, and I build the toy. After an hour of building the toy, I'm finished, but there's still five pieces on the floor. Right. I hit the switch. It doesn't work. What do I do? I get the manual, the guy that created the toy, deconstruct it, build it the way he said to build it, turn on the switch, and oh, my gosh, it works. That's the tree of life. My creator knows what breaks me. He knows what makes me. Yeah. Now, what's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That's when Eve chooses what's good for her outside of what God says. Mm. The fear of the Lord keeps us from that. Yeah. The fear of the Lord keeps us from being wise in our own eyes, keeps us from choosing what's right for me, and it ends up being detrimental to me. Yeah. I have never, ever, ever in my life met anyone towards the end of their life who constantly chose what was good for them, even when God said it wasn't good for them, ended up saying, I have had a fulfilled life. I'm so glad I went the road I went. No, never. I've never met one person, but I have met many people who feared God, obeyed what God said in his word, and had a very, very rewarding life. That doesn't mean we don't go through trials, tribulations, hardships. Oh, we're going to go through plenty of them because there is an enemy who runs this atmosphere. He's called the prince of the power of the air. He wants to destroy you. 
Yeah. And he and the number one way he destroys is he entices you what appears to be good so that you'll take that poison and then find out later you have been duped. Yeah. So man, couple couple quick things. Uh this is awesome by the way. Drop if you're if you're on here right now, drop a one if this is just blowing your mind, if this is really helping you and serving you. Um couple things. Um one, you know, uh, Apostle Paul said, I can't be a people pleaser and a pleaser of God, right? And what I've found is, and, and Tozer also said that sometimes we're so worried about offending someone, we end up impacting no one. And I've found that a lot of times, uh, Holy Spirit is having me do something I absolutely don't want to do. Whether it's an altar call at a business meeting, whether it's reaching out to someone who I, I, I really truly believe is not open to the message, um, but that obedience, that step one always unlocks like a step two. And, and so um, everything that you're saying, I, I agree because there's so many things that I can logically agree and say, yeah, this is a good thing. This, this won't offend anyone, but it's just, it's just not God's will. Um, do you find, I mean, even at, even at your stage of being, I mean, you've been impacting millions of people for quite a few years. Are you still nudged at this point to do things out of your comfort zone or are you kind of good to go there? Uh, am I still, you say nervous? Is no, well, nudge. Like, is God still having you do things that you're like nervous to do and, and terrified yeah. of? Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. So it continues is what you're saying. <laughs> it's going to keep on. I know until I leave this earth because what pleases God is when we trust him. Yeah. You know, God doesn't ask any more of us than what a spouse would ask. Mm -hmm. He says, I want your heart. I want your whole heart. Does Lisa divorce me because I made a mistake? Because maybe I raised my voice last night when she was mm -hmm. talking to me about something and I shouldn't have raised my voice. Does she say, okay, marriage is over? No, God doesn't do that with us. Mm -hmm. What God wants, he's a jealous God, jealous. He's not jealous of us. He's jealous for us. Yeah. So in other words, he said, I have a covenant with you. I gave my life to die for you. All I asked of you is to give me your heart like a wife would give her heart to her husband. Mm. You know, there is not a human being on the planet. When I say human being, a male that would propose to his girlfriend, get down on one knee, open up the little box and say, would you marry me? And she goes, oh my gosh, yes, I'll marry you. Oh, I'm so excited. It's the best day of my life, right? But you know, I dated Tony in high school and uh, we went steady for two years. I'd like a couple <laughs> nights with him a year. And, you know, Peter was my college boyfriend. And I'd like a couple nights with him a year. But I'll be with you 360 nights a year. I will I will be told, I will love you more than Tony or Peter. You will be my favorite. I'll spend 90% of my time with you. There's not a guy in the United States that would go for that. He would, yeah. he would just drop his head, close that little ring box, and walk away and say, I think it's over. And... Yet we expect Jesus, who is our bridegroom. He's the groom. He comes to this earth. Now, this, 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 this just breaks me up in the morning. Every morning, I, 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 I thank him for this. Every single morning. I said, Jesus, I can't even imagine right now. I can only imagine what you left. Hmm. People have had near-death experiences say that this life's a dream and that's reality. And it's so far beyond what you can't even describe it. Yeah. He leaves what I can only imagine, empties himself of all divine privileges, takes on a body, walks perfectly, never commits one sin. And now he's despised. He's mocked. He's spit on. He's yeah. shamed. He's punched. He's slugged. He's has his beard plucked out. He has a crown of thorns shoved into his skull. He's stripped naked. He's beat. He's whipped 49 times with lashes. Isaiah says that by the time he gets to the cross, he doesn't even have the appearance of a human being. So in other mm. words, he was so beaten, tortured, abused, that he doesn't even have the appearance of a human being anymore. Mm. Then they nail nails into his hands. He's allowing this. See, he could have called for 2,000 angels to get him out. He said sure. that. But he loved us so much. He was so committed to us that he does this. And now we yeah. think he's coming back for a bride that says, let me sleep with the world just a few nights a year. Yeah. yeah I'm giving so the analogy. Okay. So you're saying we're Gomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just read that book just last week. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Ray, all he's asking for is us to be faithful. Yeah. Not perfect. Now, don't get me wrong. 
I want to have perfect behavior for my wife. I know I I don't. There's 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 time or two <laughs> a week. I'm I'm gonna say I have to say, babe, I'm sorry. Yes. And and this is what John meant when John the Apostle wrote, "My these things I write unto you that you do not sin." And if we sin, we have an advocate. So in other words, the goal is not to sin. He said, but if, and, and in other words, we're going to need this. He's very faithful and just to forgive us our sins and yeah. completely bury it in the sea of forgetfulness. I mean, what a God, what a God we serve. Yeah. I mean, he could have been a mean God. He could have been just an average Joe God, but he's the most loving, perfect, kind, gracious, yes. merciful God. And yet we abuse that. Yeah. The lack of the fear of God causes us to abuse that and we can't do it. Yeah. When we Amen. don't do it. He opens up it. When we don't do it, when we, when we literally walk in that fear, he opens up his treasure house of wisdom, yeah. of knowledge, of creativity. Ha! Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's a verse we all need to keep in mind. First John one, nine. Very good. Um, and so I talked a little bit about your uh, messenger X because I think I only have a little bit more time with you unless, unless you're flexible. Um, and so tell us a little bit, like, you know, when I came to Cabo, you, um, you know, shared, cause I, I honestly didn't know what you guys were doing. Uh, I, I heard it was an app, but I didn't really understand like what exactly is messenger X? What are you guys up to? And where do people learn more about that? Well, Ray, I, I, you know, you have a bio that it, every day it's dated. So if they would have sent it to you, I mean, it's it's amazing. Uh, we just passed 66 million resources that we've given to leaders all over the world. Now, wow. 54 million of them have been physical leaders, um, physical resources. So, for instance, in Iran alone, we've given over six million resources. And wow. that's to the underground church. And basically what we have found out is that these leaders all over the world are crying out for knowledge. They're crying out for leadership knowledge. They're crying out for knowledge, revelation, knowledge of the word of God. And so um, what happened was, um, you know, we had given out a half a million at that time. This is like eight years ago resources in Mongolia. One of our partners went over there and he was just so excited. He said, John, I went into this tent it, he said, we drove eight hours in the middle of nowhere. There's this tent that's a church. And he said they had just received your book that was given to them a month ago. Already 10 guys had read it and it looked like it was 10 years old. Now, he was excited and I got frustrated. And I thought, why do nine people have to wait for this one guy? So I realized that with Elon Musk, what he's doing with uh, SpaceX, he's making Wi-Fi available. He wants his goal is to make it available on the entire planet. Sure. So I believe that's the Roman road. So what we did is we developed this app and I mean, it's a $14 million app and uh, it's paid for. And I just looked at the stat. So every single day we get two to 4,000 people downloading it for the first time. Okay. Just yesterday, I said two to 4,000 people. It just made me into, a, uh, you're going to think I'm lied. I'm looking at yesterday. I got this in real time. I've got all the demographics. We had 6,098 brand new people download this. Hmm. They downloaded the app, 6,098, okay? And it's been, they've done it, they've done this in 24,642 cities of the world in 240 nations. Wow. We just had a team come back from the Middle East. The middle, the, the, these guys said, look, we are so grateful. We don't know how to express in words what we needed you and your partners have been supplying for us. And so our goal right now, we're in 129 languages on the, on the planet. All right. Our goal is to do 140 languages. If we do that, we're going to reach virtually 99% of the people on the planet. Right. Now, now to put that into perspective, John, like how many languages is YouTube in? YouTube is in 80 languages. So this app is just the to put that into perspective, guys, because <laughs> it's, it's hard to have perspective around that. 29 languages. Now, let, this is what's really exciting to me. In 47 of these languages, which reach 675 million people on the planet. 47 languages were the only provider of discipleship resource. In other words, they don't have one book. They don't have one course in their language. So the, they do have Bibles. Thank God the International Bible Society has done so well. But 
you know, I remember a famous evangelist named T.L. Osborne. He went back to one of the places in Africa where he had done a massive crusade. He went back years later and they had actually incorporated witch doctor practices in their Christianity. Mm. There is a reason that Jesus said, go make disciples of all the nations. That's the last yeah. words out of his mouth. He didn't say, go make converts. Now, I'm not faulting. Or, or, ba what, or baptisms. Disciples. Right, right. Yeah. I'm not faulting what TL did. What I'm saying, God had to have a beginning. But what yeah. I'm saying is there is a tremendous need for deception because disciples make disciples. Converts don't make disciples. Disciples make disciples. So if we can impart into them the word of God that will strengthen them, the leadership aspect of the word of God, they're going to reach the people in their communities. And so that's what they're all saying. They're, they they want to reach all the lost Muslims. They were just saying, we, we had a report this morning. They were all saying, there is a young man. His dad was one of our distributors. We have a thousand team members around the globe. Their voices, their translators, their coordinators. One of our coordinators was in Aleppo, Syria, and was killed by an ISIS mm. missile. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's like we wept and uh, we wept and wept. He was one of our team members. Mm. His son now is 31. So this happened in 2016. His son is 31 now. And his son just got out in front of a group of leaders in the Middle East. And he said, listen to what he said. He said, the epic failure is not my dad being killed by that Scud missile. He said, the epic failure is if we don't finish what he, the work he began. Wow. So wow. now he's in Lebanon right now, but he and his wife and one-year-old girl are getting ready to go back to Aleppo, where his father wow. was killed, to reach the Muslim people. And they're bringing, I mean, bukus of our resources in to use to reach those people. So, you know, this is our passion. And I'm going to be the first to say, I remember I was in a room full of Iranian pastors. They were weeping, weeping. And I said, the real heroes... The real heroes are not John and Lisa Bevere. The real heroes are the businessmen and businesswomen uh, in the United States, the pastors that have given millions of dollars to resource you. Yeah. And I'll ne never forget one of those Iranian pastors walked up to me and he's in tears, literally in tears. He's a man. He's a tough man. And he said, why would people give to us when they've never met us? Mm. And I said, Ray, because they truly have the love of Jesus in their hearts. Yeah. You know, you, you really convinced me of... Not that you were trying to convince me, but you really helped me understand that the I, I believe and you, I would assume you agree. The number one way for us to fight all of the things, right? The only number one way for us to fight sex trafficking, war, killing, murder, lack of resources, everything is to get more people embodied and, and accepting the Holy Spirit like that, like. To me, if you're if you're only fighting sex trafficking, if you're only fighting this thing, those people will just be replaced. But if you disciple and they make disciples and that Holy Spirit spreads, then you have the chance of, of creating a totally different atmosphere, a totally different yeah. environment. And that's what made me so passionate about helping you get the word out about Messenger X, because you're doing things that I don't know how to do. Right. You've already set the infrastructure. You've got the groundwork. And. I was uh, very blessed to talk with some of your um, some of your team that that are over there doing the work. And so how do people um, how do people give to the mission? How do people get the app? What What's the best way for them to do that? Well, let's start with the app. The app, again, is free. They've got an iPhone. They go to the um, app store, type in Messenger, M-E-S-S-E-N-G-E-R-X. Now, there's no space between the R and the X. <clears throat> It'll bring you right to it. If you've got an Android, go to Google Play, type in Messenger X. If you don't have either, which I'm, I doubt your people would have, they're going to have one or the other. You can go to MessengerX.com. The other thing I want to say to them is share it. Uh, we have over 45 courses just in English. And they're awesome. Eight they're amazing. Awesome. Listen, this is what I love. So when the audio company that contained a lot of my books saw that we were giving this away free, they said, how can we not do the same, right? Wow. They gave us all the, so I've got eight audio books on here. And one of them is the Beta Satan. Now the Beta Satan just passed 6 million copies last September. Wow. It's still, it's it's 30 years old in June. I wrote it 30 years ago. Wow. And it's still a number one bestseller. Still. Okay. I saw it on Amazon just the other day in a Christian category is number one. Wow. 400,000 people have listened to that audio book. I've got the demographics on it. So in other words, they would have paid $12 for that book, for that audio book, 
on Audible. But because that company so appreciated what we were doing, they gave it to us. And now, you know, we've got 6 million beta Satans out there. There's 6 million 400,000 because of the 400,000 people that have listened to it on, on it. And this is what it's going to look like for your people. Um, when you, when you, when you download it, it's going to look just like this. And then you've got watch, read and listen, and let's try to make it where you can see it. That's yeah. what it'll look like. The other thing is if you want to help with the mission, you can give right on the app. If you want to help yeah. with the mission, you can go to messenger X dot com or met or excuse me you can go to messengerinternational.com that's our website for our ministry they could go there but i just want to thank them look if yeah if you it just if you would just pray for us yes. and you would just share this this app because this is the way i look at it my big thing i do when somebody had a birthday is i give them a dozen titleist golf balls but guess what? They lose them in two months. If I give them a polo shirt, they're done with it in two years. Never in my life have I been able to give one of my friends a $14 million gift for mm. free. So I so tell awesome. people, please share it. So those 6,000 people that downloaded it yesterday, it's from people all over the world telling people, you got to get this. You got to get this. Pastors say to their people, you got to get this. And so to me, that's the greatest gift we can give. Because that's what's going to strengthen somebody to endure this race till the end so that they Amen. can have a grand and glorious entrance into the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm so good. So good. You, Ray, yes. and you and Jessica. You know, I, I'm going to say this in front of your people. I've been in ministry for four decades. I don't think I've met anybody that has grown so fast mm -hmm. as you, and Jessica. Wow. I am so grateful that you guys are like dry sponges that have just soaked mm. in the word of God. And mm. I'm so proud of you for doing it. I mean, you've wow. only been sick for what, a year and a half? Uh, yeah, 15 months. <laughs> Come on. No, oh, thank you. So God, is, you. God is good. God is good. He wired me a certain way. <laughs> um, but thank you, man. I really appreciate that. So please, if you're on here, get the app. Why wouldn't you? I've listened to courses on there. It's amazing what he has on there. And also, if you feel called in your heart to give, to help get these resources into areas that may not otherwise get these kind of resources, um, please, please do. Share this with your team, spread it around, tag people. And we're just so grateful for you, John. I know that you have a, a crazy travel schedule and speaking schedule. So thank you for being on here, man. Thing. Please, please. Yeah. I want to emphasize to everybody is, yeah. I feel like the of God, the book you just shared is without a doubt, it's my life message. And I think it's the most important message. It's so good. You get everything right. That is not on Messenger X because that is oh. owned by a publisher. So I will say it's a $29 book. Amazon has it on sale for $15 right now. There you go. It's 42 chapters. And let me say this to your team. Okay. I realize how busy our lives are. And I, I prayed, I said, God, this is probably one of the most important messages you've ever given me to write. How do I do this? And he said, write short chapters. So yes. every chapter is six. You made it pages. easy. Yeah, I know. Except for two, two chapters are eight pages long, but every chapter, 40 of the 42 chapters, six pages long. And then you have a devotional at the end. It's not a devotional. It's a book. You can read it in one city, but you have a devotional. What to chew on, pray, ponder for that day. Then I did 42 four-minute videos. It's in a QR code in Appendix 1, and there's no charge for it. I'll never forget. The publisher was like, wait, you're going to charge for that, right? And I said, no, I'm giving this. So you get the you get the prayers, you get the devotions to ponder, you get the uh, four, 40, 42 four minute videos. You just read for five to seven minutes the chapter a day. It really gets it into you. I was walking into the gym yesterday. A lady just goes, I just finished awe of God. And she said, my life is totally changed. I we have received it over and over. It's been out over a year. I just had lunch with the publisher yesterday. They're all shaking their heads, scratching their heads, saying this book is still a number one bestseller. It's crazy how this book okay. has is spreading like wildfire. So yeah. I know your team will eat it up. I want to see them walk in the wisdom of God. I will say one more thing. There yeah. is, because I've got a meeting to go into in two minutes. Sure. There is over 40 promises, distinct promises that God makes to those who walk in holy fear. Mm. You mentioned one, the beginning of wisdom. There's 39 others, 
And I just want to encourage your people to get the book so they can learn and glean what God will do for them when they walk in holy, healthy, godly fear. Amen. And, and I'll tell you, I love your books because you, you use so much scripture. The awe of God gave me a much deeper understanding of scripture. It was just, just so, so good. So good. And so love you, John, love supporting you. Please get the app. I mean, if you're, you know, just get into some of his courses and stuff. They're, they're just so, so good and, uh, and help us get the word out. Help us, um, you know, if you feel called to, to do so, give to his mission, let them do the, the tough work that would be very difficult for us to do. Um, but we just appreciate you so much love and God bless you, John and your family. We're just so, so appreciative of you, man. I'm so honored to be on with you, Ray. Thank you for having me. It's been a real yeah. privilege. We're all just serving. That's what we're yeah. doing. That's our life mission for all of us. And that's why I love the word of God. It changes you from being selfish to selfless. That's transformation. Amen. Amen. John Bevere, everyone, give him some love in the comments, share this around, and we appreciate you tuning in. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate you. Bye, guys. Later, guys. And also, I uh, forgot to mention this. We made it easy for you. If you want to grab his book, it's on sale on Amazon. I didn't know that. Uh, Higdengroup.com forward slash awe, A-W-E. Take your right to Amazon, pick that thing up, and uh, you will be very happy that you did. I promise you. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate you guys. Awesome, awesome. Was that awesome or what? Amazing. And so share this around. So, so good. And the link again is higdengroup.com forward slash awe if you want to get his book, The Awe of God. And then the app is Messenger X, Messenger X. So if you look for it, it's Messenger, no space, Messenger X. All right. Tons of good information on there and also how you can support it. And so appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.